Hey everyone, how is it going? So welcome back to the Master and Opening Strategy series. This is where we have a little look at games through history that have been made famous for their openings and have a little analyse of them. Now this is a game from 1956, it's a bit of an older one and it's between Nezmetinov and Kristakov. I'll put their names on screen. But this is a game around the French defence and it really, really shows the importance of not playing passively. So let's just dive right into it. So the game starts with the French, which is e4, e6, d4, d5. If you don't know the French, I have a whole video on it. I'll put a little card thing up there. Um, horsey to the c3, horsey f6. Now, normally what you see from here is the pawn pushing up to the e5. And you'll either see the horsey kind of jump down here onto the e4, or you might see him come back to here on the d7. While it looks like you'd be retreating there, actually it's not too bad, because after something like f4, c5 will come down just to try and smash open the centre. That c5 really, really keep on move in the French, something you see all the time. And if he goes ahead and takes, black can either go straight away and just capture with his bishop, or he can just keep developing as normal and just pick that up whenever he wants. But for this, we didn't have this, we had the McCutcheon variation. So the McCutcheon, the bishop comes across for the pin, like so, and then black comes down doing the same thing. So, most logical move, push forward that pawn on the e5. Of course you're going to. And the pawn then comes down onto the h6. Looking to do a bit of an exchange. Bishop then drops back, and this is kind of the start of Black's downfall. He decides to go for the horsey to the d7, and this is a really passive move. That horsey, it's not really doing too much there, and there's much better moves that could be made. For example, really the way you should be playing it is, bishop goes ahead, takes the horsey, and white can either capture back with the bishop, which isn't the best move. Bishop's just kind of stuck there, not really doing too much, but it's not a terrible move. Really, you want to be capturing with your pawn towards the center, kind of opening up that B file for the rook, and then after something like horsey comes down like so, bishop drops back, give up the pawn, but then queen comes up, horsey jumps across, and then from here, white would have plans, like I say, bringing across the rook, probably bringing across the bishop, getting it onto a nice diagonal, but it's a very, very even game. And you can see by the analysis bar, it's, well, 0.0, .0 completely even, and much better game for black. But instead, he goes for that very, very passive move of the horsey onto the d7. And now white is at a plus one advantage. So queen comes across to the g4, just staring down at this undefended pawn here. And black brings back the bishop to the f8. Now, I know this is all about passive moves this episode. This looks a passive move, but this is actually the best move. In close-off positions, these kinds of retreats can be justified, and it's considerably better than doing something like the g6, because after the bishop comes across and something like the c5, this bishop can then just come across and capture that pawn. And if black was to just go ahead and take, queen comes up, and we've just blown open that king side, and it's pretty much just game over for black. So the bringing back the bishop isn't actually a terrible move here, and Stockfish does actually recommend it. So white just keeps developing as normal, gets the horsey into action, and then black comes down with that c5 move that you see time and time again within the French. And it's always a great move, directly attacking the centre, trying to blow up in this little pawn chain there. But there is an argument to be made that possibly the a6 could have been the better move, mainly because of white's next move, which is jumping up the horsey to the b5. Now, I'll give you a second to, if you want to pause the video, have a little look to why he's brought it up, because it can look a bit of a funny move. There we are, I'm going to assume you've paused it and stuff like that. Um, now, if white was, sorry, black was to do something like pushing down the a6, that's pretty much game over for black. Also, he jumps across to here, putting him in check, and after takes, queen comes up, and it's just game over for black. Um, we've just completely opened up this position. He'd come across like so, and then we would just go ahead and take. Black's having a really, really bad time from there, uh, which is why kind of bringing down the a6 first may have been the better move. It's kind of debatable though. Um, so he goes for the c5, also jumps across, and he brings down the g6. Clearly he's seen what the plan is there. Now, while that g6 does kind of stop all that from happening, it's it's a really passive move. Yet again, it's a really passive move. 
I'm assuming that when he was analysing, he realised that bringing the horsey out to the C6 was a bad idea. While it looks a normal kind of development, developmental move, it leads to the check. Bishop takes, Queen comes across. He's then got a retreat like so, and then the bishop's lost. So he probably saw that and he was like, oh, I should probably just push down the G6. But there's a better move to be made. If he was a lot more aggressive and went and captured the pawn like so, then after the check, takes, queen comes across, bishop can then take that pawn, completely safe to do so, threatening the queen. Then after takes, queen comes across, does the exchange, and now it's completely even position. Things were a lot more favourable for black, and clearly he missed this while he was analysing. Going back to it, that g6, well currently we're in a 0.2 advantage for white, pretty much completely even. Going for that g6 move, it's a 1.9, pretty much 2 pawn advantage for white now. And that's all just down to playing far too passively. So white just needs to develop and develop with tempo. So the move, bishop to the d3, makes the more sense. Now from here, white can get castled off either way that the 1-2, everyone loves that choice. But also, it is attacking this pawn here. Now, if something like pawn comes down, then after it takes, takes, and takes, it's just, it's game over for black here. There's nothing they can do to salvage it. Um, but what black opts to do is to bring across the rook onto the g8. Um, it's a bit of a passive move yet again. While it does kind of cover all the threats, it's, there's a lot of tempo lost yet again. Now, if the a6 came down instead, then it could play out similar where, you know, he's going to go ahead and grab that pawn. Um, clearly, if he goes ahead and takes, then same situation, pretty much game over there. But instead, if he went for something like, whoopsie daisy, this going ahead and taking. Then after queen comes across, puts him in check, which would be a fantastic move uh, because of that pin. Queen comes across and then takes... We're kind of left in this kind of position here. Um, and it would play out something like that. Um, while it's still a 1.8 advantage for white, it's still, it, it's a lot more open and it just kind of gives them a bit more of a chance compared to bringing it back to here, bringing this across. Like I say, things are just getting really, really jammed up and it's starting to get super uncomfortable here. And White decides that they just want to completely blow up in the centre and goes for the C4. Maybe something like the C3 would have been better and then after takes and takes then the Rook can come across onto the nice open file. But the C4 is absolutely fine, like I say, just to try and blow up in the position. So Pawn takes, Pawn takes, and then Black has to be careful in this position. If something like A6, just watch that analysis bar, it's basically just game over. Because after takes, 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 Puts them in the check and then the king's forced to take. Pawn can then be pushed up and then pushing the king down. And from here, you can see king's just in the middle of nowhere. And it's the game pretty much just plays itself from there. It's game over for black. So like I say, where were we? Um, he brings across the horsey onto the c5. So queen comes across, picks up the free pawn, and he decides to capture the pawn on the d5. Yet again, better moves that could be made and moves with tempo. Now, this looks a strange move. Bringing across the horsey to here, threatening the queen. Now, yes, he can be taken, but it leads to a really interesting line and it leads to a much more comfortable position for black. So after the pawn takes, you can see queens are kind of staring down at each other. But the main thing is that the horsey can come down and capture that bishop. Now, clearly the queen can't go ahead and take because queen's undefended. Queen will then come down and it's just game over for white in that position. So instead... King would then have to come up, white would then lose their castle and opportunities. And then after pawn takes, queen exchange, king takes, pawn takes back, we're left in this position. And yes, white does have the advantage, 1.3 advantage here, but the white king's in the middle of the board. There's some decent movement for the bishops here for black, and black can definitely fight for a draw in this position. Probably won't win, but they can fight for a draw. Whereas going back, capturing with that pawn, this is a plus three advantage for white now. Black isn't fighting for a draw, they're just fighting for survival at this point. Now we all knew this move was coming, White has been holding on to it and just waiting until the centre of the board was cleared. Jumping up the horsey, putting him in check. The only thing really that uh, Black can do is to go ahead and capture with his bishop. Then after pawn takes, queen comes down, White just gets castled off. 
And look at the difference between the two positions. Black's King has just sat there. It's in the middle of the board there on the back rank. He can't get castled off to the king's side. He has two pieces in the way, so he can't even get castled off to the queen's side there. White has the king nice and safe in the corner there. The rooks are connected, and both the rooks have really obvious places to go to. Clearly, we're going to be looking at this rank, and this rank, the two open ranks there. White has all of the pieces in play. Black's just having a really bad time, and honestly, this position just plays itself. So, Horsey captures the bishop. Queen clearly goes ahead and takes back. Black keeps developing. He really needs to get these pieces out the way just for any chance of trying to get that king into safety there. But clearly, that inevitable check from the rook is coming. So, the bishop comes across and blocks it. And White has a couple of choices here. Um, normally, I would probably be going for something like this, just getting the other uh, rook onto the open file there. And then, after something like castles, then bringing across the horsey like so, um, just threatening to take, force them to capture back with the pawn there, and then just blowing open this queen side a little bit there. But instead, white decides to bring across the horsey first. Now, if black did go ahead and take, clearly he would just go ahead and take back like so. But instead, he decides to go for this, the g5. And white finishes off their development and finally brings that other rook into action on the open file here. Um, there's pretty much nothing that black can do. Um, he moves the king across to the d7, which does make sense. Clearly, you don't want to be going castling off the queen side now when you have this guy staring right down at you, pinning your horsey into play. So, brings across the king like so. And now white can just initiate their main attack, bringing across the horse to here on the f5. Brilliant move. Now, if black was to go ahead and capture, we would just then capture back, put him in check, force the king out of the way, push up the pawn if he goes ahead and takes, then we just bring across the bishop like so, attacking the queen, and it's just, it's game over from here. Look at all the pieces in action, there's pretty much nothing they can do about it. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Which is why uh, black decides to retreat the queen out of the way. So we have queen b5 coming in hot, and then the rook comes across to the c8. Then Queen can just quite happily come across and capture that pawn there. Rook comes down and Queen just jumps out of the way. And then a6. a6 leads White to a few choices. Um, now, what White decided to do was to bring it back here to the d3. Just keep this guy nice and defended and keep staring down like so. So, you know, if he was to go ahead and take, then after this, this, and whoop, come across to here. Um, you could do that, or instead we can come across to here and take, and that way we're threatening both pieces. Um, alternatively, white could have just gone ahead and taken on the a6, and if black took what looks like a free horsey there, um, rook comes up after we've done the exchange, and we'll put them in check. Blocks, come down, queen comes across, and again, we can come across to here. We're threatening this, we're threatening this. If he moves out the way, we can either pick up either of them, or we could just put them in check further. It's completely dominating position, let's be honest there. But yeah, we have come down to the D3. Sorry, a bit of a tangent there. Now we're at the end game, we might as well just rattle through it. So a queen comes across onto the B8, Horsey picks up the free pawn, Rook comes down, and then Horsey jumps across, taking the other pawn there. Now, when the bishop goes ahead and takes, that just lets the queen come across, put them in check, force the king out of the way, and then the rook can come up and take the horsey. When the rook comes down, then the bishop is now free to come across, put him in check, pretty much just forcing the queen to block. And then after the queen comes up to here, clearly queen can't take queen because it is completely pinned in. This is on the way, it is game over, and black just resigns, and rightly so. They probably should have done that quite some time beforehand. But yeah, what a fantastic game, and what a great game for a learning opportunity. It really shows you the dangers of passive play. Let me just find the move. I believe it was move six. Here we are, this horsey jumping back to the d7. Such a passive move, and it just allows white to just keep moving into position. White isn't doing anything exceptional here. They're just doing basic chess principles. Moving pieces into position, getting the minor pieces into action, getting castled off. But we have that move. We have the g6 here, again, very, very passive, just allowing white to just, again, develop and develop with tempo. And finally, this move here, the rook across onto the g8. Just 
10 moves into the game, and three of those very passive moves just allows White to completely dominate. And by move 10, it's basically just game over. And all White's done from here is just follow the basic chess principles and just playing on, as you can see, just getting castles off, connecting the rooks, getting the rooks onto the open files. And yeah, it's just game over from Black. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying making it. I'm still going to be doing deep dives on opening. So if there's anything you want to see me cover, just put it down in the comments and I'll try my best to cover it and do your little shout out as well. And um, drop it a like if you like it, just helps with the algorithm. And if you really like it, please subscribe. Just really helps the channel grow. Um, I have a little PayPal link if, you know, anyone wants to you know, buy me a coffee or anything. Don't feel like you have to or anything like that, though. It's just as a, it's just there. Um, but yeah, you guys go off, have some fun, play some chess, and I'll catch you all later.